All right, thanks, Derek. Um, you touched on some things uh, with voice I'm going to go a little bit deeper on. Um, so I work for a company in Berlin called Career Foundry. Uh, what we do, we're in the business of education. Um, we teach people how to become UX designers like yourselves, as well as UI designers and web developers. Um, and we did some research for a new course we were going to create over VUI design, voice user, face, user interface design. So that's where this talk came from. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about where or how the voice interface kind of rose to where it is now, um, a little bit about how voice user interfaces will be, and then seven reasons why I think it'll be extremely magical in the future. So the rise of the voice interface. This is probably the first time you ever saw a voice interface was Google pioneering their uh, voice search. Within a few short years, it accounted for 20% of all searches on Google. And then maybe you remember this, this little icon. Um, this is the Siri app icon. So it started off as an app uh, in 2010. And in two short months, Apple bought the company. Um, and they started selling it as hardware on their phones. So Apple is making very clear commitment early on to put voice user interfaces inside everything that they do. And then a few years later, around 2014, um, the Amazon Echo came along, and it's been the main competitor in voice user interfaces ever since. And you know, it's a standalone smart assistant. Um, I think these things are coming to, or Amazon is going to be selling these things in Turkey soon, so maybe you'll get your hands on them very, very soon. Um, so these devices um, have gotten smaller. Um, this is the Amazon Echo Dot. It was the one of the most popular things sold for Christmas last year. Um, they didn't release the official numbers, but Jeff Bezos said millions. <laughs> also interesting that the richest man in the world is putting so much work into voice user interfaces with the uh, Amazon Alexa platform. So this is where the technology is. Smart assistant companies claim that speech recognition software is not 4.9% word error rate and humans average around 5.1%. So slowly, technology is catching up to humans. It's an exciting time to be thinking about VUI design. These are the major players right now um, in the smart assistant space. Now, it's a whole new interface, but generally what you see is things related to smart assistants because that's where the money is being put forward to uh, develop and work on the UX. So these are the, the platforms, the four platforms that are, that are popular right now. And what you'll see is all the smaller companies have found it easier to build on top of these platforms instead of to building their own platform. And there are countless others. Uh, Samsung has one named Bixby. Um, obviously, this will be a new platform, uh, much like OS was um, in the past 10 years. So this is how it works today. If you were to design an app um, for one of these platforms, you'd have a device, say uh, the iPhone, the Google Home, or an Amazon Echo, you build some sort of app or skill, um, and then it's powered by a cloud-based platform. So these are kind of the, the three parts to designing the UIs today. So this is a vegetable app um, that one of our Career Foundry employees made uh, as testing out our, our course. Uh, so you access this on the Amazon Echo, it accesses the, the skill, which is um, also in the cloud, and then uses the platform to make the app run. So that's, that's kind of how they're building out the future of the UI design. Much like uh, smartphones, it's being done through an app store. So they're kind of outsourcing the job of UX design to companies who are building apps for Alexa. And it's a great time to start to get into this because in a few years, the smart assistant space alone, so just smart assistants like Echo um, and Google Home, those are going to be a $3 billion industry. But there's a few problems. So I have an Amazon Echo Dot. It falls a bit short in some, some ways. Um, the, the interactions can feel a bit flat. And this is why. Because right now, this is, this is sort of mediocre. We're at command and control. So you have to explicitly indicate when you want to speak by saying, Alexa. Um, the conversation is closed uh, with a beginning and an end. Uh, and you can, you can give a command at any time. Um, but you have to use a specific action and wake words. So, it works, but uh, it's a bit like tapping on an old school phone. Um, what we want to get to, which is what I think will make it much more magical, is conversational. So users are not required to indicate when they want to talk. They just talk like they normally would to another human. Um, there's longer back and forth, so it can remember the interactions. It can remember things you've said. 
um, and it just uses natural turn-taking, um, asking a question, pauses, which means it's more human and conversational. So as of today, no one has designed uh, a VUI that's conversational, but you'll hear lots about it, people talking about conversational UI, some claiming it's already here, but I think it's, it's still a few more years away. Um, but what stands between us and conversational, I think a lot of it is a big UX challenge. If you look at touchscreen interfaces, uh, this is kind of following a similar path. Um, in the 90s, there was this, the first, one of the first touchscreen phones um, was named Simon, and it used a stylus, and you had to tap specifically on the interface to get it to work, um, and then 10 years later, along comes the iPhone. And I don't know if you remember, but one of the big things about the iPhone was you didn't need a stylus. You could just use your fingers. It was natural. Um, and so this is, this is how things went from mediocre to magical with touchscreen interfaces. And I hope that the same thing will happen with voice interfaces. So what will the iPhone of voice interfaces look like? I don't know, but I'm excited to see what that will be. So now maybe you understand this device a little bit more, maybe what's possible. Um, I think one day we're gonna look at this thing and we're gonna say, how archaic? Why was it so clunky and why did I have to bark orders to it? Why couldn't it just tell when I was having a bad day? And soon I think that we'll start to improve on that. So how many of you have used a Google Home or an Amazon Echo? Just played around with one, a few people. So I think maybe you'll get more chance in the future. Um, but if you look at these devices, you can already start to see a little bit of the current problems with why they're not in every home. So right now, they're not in every home by any means. Um, if you look at this, you see there's a little mute switch on the Amazon Echo, or the Google Home Mini. So they added this after they released it based on concerns that people were worried about something. What if someone is listening? So this is, this is something I've heard a lot. People worrying about potentially a company or maybe government agency or all kinds of things with a microphone in their home. But let's look at it like a UX problem. So it's a conceptual model problem here, I think. The conceptual model is something like they think a bug, a flat, an apartment. They think that the, this microphone that's in their home is always on, they think it's being recorded and actively listened to, and there are no signifiers that someone is listening. And I guess that's the point. If you're in a spy movie, you try and hide all the signifiers. So this is, I think, what maybe people are thinking in the background. But the reality is, every one of you who has a smartphone, you have two cameras in it, you have a GPS unit, and you have a microphone. So it's not, it's not just bugging your home, it's bugging your entire life, if you're thinking of it like this. So let's, let's not get too freaked out by this. Um, this is just kind of the, some of the problems we're running to today. Um, and these problems can be solved. So I think we should be working on VUI interfaces just like everything else in a way that's safe, designed ethically, um, but still useful with a full functionality. I don't think we get to decide if VUIs become a thing. Um, there's, as you can see, a lot of money being poured into these interfaces, a lot of people willing to embrace them. But I do think as designers, we get to decide how they are designed. So assuming we, we can come over, overcome those hurdles, those ethical issues, um, here's seven reasons why I think VUIs will be magical in the future. First of all, the visually impaired can take full advantage of today's tech. So for the past 10 years, they've been missing out on the smartphone boom. There's over 250 million people in America who are visually impaired today, and around 80% of those people are 50 years uh, or older. So that's a huge market, even just in one country, of people who are willing to embrace this new interface. And they can actually, uh, visually impaired people can hear around two or three times faster than regular people. So you should understand that this is a superpower and you should design your VUI accordingly to take advantage of this. Talking is faster than typing. This seems a bit like a no-brainer, um, but Stanford did a really great study on using a phone, which is faster, tapping into your phone or dictating into your phone. What they found, um, I think, obviously, is that tapping, uh, or talking to your phone was around three times faster than tapping. And one of the main things about it that was that with the new text uh, and speech recognition software, it was way more accurate than tapping. And I don't know if any of you have ever owned an Apple TV and used this nightmare UI, but it's extremely frustrating. And I think you'll start to see this is why a lot of people um, are adding to the remotes, they're adding a little microphone, so they're adding a VUI to things with a remote. 
So voice is hands-free, eyes-free, and omnidirectional. You can use a VUI while you're cooking. You don't have to alter your behavior in any way. It doesn't require a whole lot of attention until you're actually giving it um, a command. And it doesn't require your eyes. Um, it can be placed in any part of your house, and it still manages to, to do the job. And that's going to be really helpful when you're designing experiences. So VUIs are also cheaper and smaller than touch screens. Another one that you might think is pretty obvious, but Apple's iPhone X is reportedly the most breakable iPhone ever, costing around $1,000. Imagine if you didn't have to worry about breaking that device. If you look at a touch screen, it can go no smaller than a finger's width, because what's the point of having a touch screen that's smaller than a finger? It's pretty much the same as a touch screen the size of a finger. So right now, this is a, a, a thing you can buy on the market today. It's advertised as the world's smallest headset. Um, imagine having all the, the knowledge of the human entire history inside your ear with a device like this um, that you can talk to, you can um, give commands, that it can help you out in your daily life. I think you're starting to see that these kind of things are becoming a bit magical. So the device can change, but the UX remains the same. And this is a really nice benefit of designing for VUI. So you saw this slide before, the device, the app, and the platform. If the device changes, it doesn't really affect the experience. So you can be using a microphone that's placed strategically. Uh, you could use your phone. Uh, you could use your device in your home. Um, and the experience remains the same. You don't need to design multiple screens that work on multiple sizes. You just design the experience. Right now, in our world, we're a bit glued to our phones. And with something like this, uh, with a VUI, you may not even have to take your phone around with you in your pocket. Um, maybe you could do something like sign in to a service with your voice, and it's just a little microphone. So instead of having your $1,000 iPhone X in your phone, uh, in your pocket, worrying about losing it, you could just speak into a $2 microphone. Speech conveys more meaning than text. And this is the real magical thing about VUI design. I don't know if you've ever had a text conversation with someone and it just sort of fell flat because all you have is text. It's very difficult to convey emotion with things as simple as text. And your technology has the same problem as you. So I want you to do something. I want you to close your eyes with me right now. So close your eyes, relax your body, listen to the sound of my voice. So maybe there's a few things you can tell by just the sound of my voice. Maybe you can tell that I'm male, relatively young, maybe that English is my first language. There's a lot of things you can tell if you listen very carefully. OK, open your eyes. These are some of the things that you can tell when you hear a voice. You can tell sometimes the age, sometimes the gender, regional background, personality, and even current emotional, emotional state. And which is really interesting because, you know, even sometimes when we talk, you can hear that we're smiling. So if I'm talking to you right now and I'm smiling, there's a good chance the system who's listening to that might think maybe there's some sarcasm involved here, something that's evaded a lot of uh, technology before. And finally, our interactions with technology become more human. So, so sci-fi taught us that interactions with technology might be a bit boring, they might be a little bit annoying, and they might be downright dangerous. But what happens as technology becomes a bit more human? Google makes these really great ads where they try and show the power of their uh, smart assistants by you ask a, the top thing is you ask a question to the device, and the bottom it, the system replies. Uh, and I thought those were really great, really clever ads, so I decided to make a few of my own to show you what it might look like in the future when VUI becomes magical. So imagine a VUI that could tell by the quality of your voice how you're feeling and adjust your schedule accordingly. It has the power to remember all your past conversations so that it can give you the kind of advice that you need.
Maybe it will become so good at human interactions that it could handle such complex things as depression. <laughs> With VUI design, there's no need for onboarding because it comes naturally. Actually, Amazon just released Amazon Echo Kids Edition, so that's something that's coming soon. Even after your eyes begin to stop working, long into that period of your life, your voice still seems to work. It's one way that you can interact with the world. So to recap, these are some of the things that I think will make VUIs magical in the next five to 10 years. And I hope that uh, that excites you a bit to, to, get, to get involved in projects involving VUI design. So who gets to create this future? I think it's you guys. I think UX designers are especially equipped to handle VUI design. You know, your deliverable is really more of a user flow. Um, it's a chart. Um, you don't have to get really good at, uh, you know, software such as Sketch or XD. Um, you're just working uh, with diagrams and doing real UX problems. Career Foundry offers a course on VUI design. Um, it's very hands-on, project-based. By a few weeks in the course, you'll be designing your own skill for Amazon Alexa. Um, Amazon actually partnered with us to create this course. Um, and if you're interested in it, come talk to me after. Um, I've even got a little bit of a discount for uh, UX Alive. Um, and we also offer other courses if you're interested in UX design and that sort of thing. Thanks.